is this really the pickup truck of choice in 2022 or 2023 in South Africa or in the world in general? Um, yeah, let's uh, let's find out what it's really made of, who's it for, and most importantly, its benefits. All right, let's get to it. Uh, welcome back, folks. It's AVP here. For those of you who know me already, you know I'm a die-hard electrical vehicle fan, right? Uh, and there was this new pickup truck that just came in. This, by the way, is, uh, was designed by a car company called Mazabuco. Let's dive into the specs of the vehicle and what it's really made of, right? So, first off, we look at the design of this thing. This thing looks really super um, modern. It looks very minimalistic. Uh, you look at it and you go, that's the kind of car I want to be in, I want to be driving. Um, and it gets you curious about how it, how it's going to look like inside, right? Okay, so this pickup truck is powered by a 500 kilowatt motor, well, a dual motor uh, system. Uh, one in the back and one in the front axle. Uh, powering up, essentially making the car an all-wheel drive. It's going to range of about 400 kilometers. Not so good, but we're going to talk about it later. Um, it's got an acceleration, guys, of zero to 100 kilometers per hour. I think that's about 60 to 70 miles per hour. Um, but yeah, zero to 100 miles per hour. Yeah, but sorry, 100 kilometers per hour in less than five seconds, in under five seconds. So, Mazda be a good design their own skateboard platform for their EV, uh, for this pickup truck specifically. And uh, that that's where your normal power electronics, your transmission systems, your thermal management systems uh, normally sit. Uh, you would normally find them, you know, packed up right there in a compact way on the skateboard. In fact, how you design the skateboard determines how your overall car would look in general. In fact, just just as a just as a side note here. And so this this car company went out and they designed their own skateboard platform. Um, they initially wanted to go for something that's already to be news, but they decided, hey, that that's going to be a whole lot of money for you know it would crash their business model essentially. Unfortunately, that's it for now about this car. There's nothing much going on. We don't have the interior of the car yet. Um, that's because this car uh, is still in its conceptual stages or still in the concept stages of development. We're probably gonna get the prototype of this model um, next year, June. Although the car company, Mazabuco, is trying to push to have the prototype set out for June or winter this year, 2021, in South Africa. Now, uh, yeah, normally businesses and car companies, they like to really underestimate these timelines. They just like put out ridiculous timelines. Like they always say, oh yeah, our car is gonna come out in June of this year. What they actually mean is, we are still working on it and it's gonna come out next year. So give us a year to put it out. So always give them that year leeway just to you know, give them a bit of a breather here. Okay, so jumping on to the second question here, who is this car really for? Now, uh, now, first of all, this car looks really modern. I think that it's for pretty much every average consumer in South Africa who can afford it, though. When we're talking about the target market here, we're normally talking about the people who are likely to drive the car. Now, frankly, looking at this car, my estimation here, cost estimations here, even though the company hasn't really officially released any, uh, you know, cost specs about this car or how much it will be, uh, when it comes out, uh, whenever that would be as well. Um, yeah, I, I, I estimate something around about the neighborhood of about $50,000. Now that's about, uh, it's about 800,000 Rand, right? Give or take. It's gonna be ridiculously expensive. It's, I, I think it's the first EV pickup truck that we've, uh, we've, ever, we've ever had in the country. So it's bound to be expensive, but at the same time, I like the fact that they've got a scalable battery pack. Now, scalable simply means that they've got different variations of the, of the battery pack of their power unit. And you need that because some people just need the truck to just like drive around and get go to work and come right back and uh, you know, just uh, do some groceries with it or something like that. Like just casual things, right? Something that you do on a normal sedan car or hatchback vehicle. But if you're a farmer and you need to be towing up some big loads, right, around the city or from one city to the next, you're probably gonna need a higher power unit, right? So uh, you, you need a much more a denser, better unit, uh, a much more capable uh, battery pack. 
that's going to be much more expensive obviously but it's going to give you you know the extra power that you need uh it's also not going to deplete you're looking for something that's going to deplete less as you drive more right and frankly most electrical vehicle companies aren't there yet they aren't at the point where they could say yes our battery unit actually is so efficient that you actually like the thing is you have cooling problems here or thermal problems right with these with, these, with electrical engineering companies and so it's kind of hard to fit a very small battery pack unit so that you can have more room for other things to fit in so it's a battle against thermal issues and power issues right so how do you combine those two and make sure that you come out with something beautiful out of that right how do you make sure that you reduce the thermal issue the thermal problems on your vehicle but at the same time you're increasing the power outage that the battery has to offer right that's the dilemma that companies have right now ev companies have i mean it is a scalable battery pack but we're i'm really looking forward to seeing how they're gonna how they're gonna solve the thermal issue problem make them compact solve thermal issues and yet maintain that power output as compared to a bigger better unit so that's what the consumers really want to see it's 2021 people we're not living in 2015 anymore or 2005 okay but long story short this car is made for people who are actually it's just for the working class folks okay obviously it's for, for the working class folks but it's not just the working class people it's people who can't afford to go out and buy but see this is the thing if you're going to put the price point above 800,000 rand that's in south africa by the way in case you didn't know that's 800,000 rand going up those are premium vehicles right there you're playing along the premium range kind of vehicles and so this company has to really think about who this this car is for but for now i think it's going to be definitely for working class people but to be frank about who this car is for my argument here is not necessarily conclusive because we don't we don't have much to deal with about this car that's why i'm cutting them some slack for now uh, i'm really looking to see how they're going to pull off the interior design because that that's going to be very important at this point let's remember this is a conceptual car it's still at its conceptual stages so let us really give them a chance see how the prototype will look like right i'm look the prototype will probably come in through the fall season that's going to be around september uh i mean they're promising winter but knowing ev companies especially in south africa it's probably not going to happen people it's not going to happen okay not during winter okay so the benefits of the car is that first of all you're getting rid of uh, co2 which are carbon em emissions and you guys know i've been an evangelist for uh you know clean sustainability uh, clean sustainable environments i can't wrap my head around the fact that it looks so much like the rivian car model like it's so unbelievable like why Listen, listen to me, listen to me. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, let me tell you this, let me tell you this real quick, let me tell you this real quick. This car right here, right, look at, look at this Rivian car model right here. In fact, I'm going to put them both right here, right in front of you, right? Look at these two vehicles here and tell me that these, that these guys, Mazda Buco, didn't necessarily, like, I understand, yeah, they, they brought their, they, they gave the car the life, but it's look, oh my goodness, it looks so much like the Rivian car model. I mean, come on, uh, have your own kind of signature here, Mazabuco, okay? But I understand this is their first concept car, so they might change it over the years as, as they go. Uh, it might have a much more South African looking look. Uh, in fact, uh, the CEO of the company, Mazabuco himself, he actually said that the reason why they went for a pickup truck was because that's the signature car for south africans but i i, I get that from a cost perspective that is like more uh, most people in south africa actually buy pickup trucks but uh yeah that's not really necessarily what i see to be frank and i live in south africa i'm south african so south africans like small cars like most south africans don't really do pickup trucks I mean, I, I like I like trucks a lot, especially pickups. Uh, but <clears throat> yeah, I think that if you're if you if you're reaching for the masses in South Africa in the EV vehicle, you probably want to design something super compact like this right here. This is a Honda car. I'm going to talk about this on a separate video. They went for a pickup truck because it's good for their business model, right? I, that's what I think. Uh, but uh, I mean, 
Um, I, I am, I'm hoping I'm wrong about that, actually. It's a great start for EVs in South Africa, uh, but I really do think that it's going to be super expensive, frankly speaking. I think the price point of this car, the cost of the car, will really be a make or break situation for the car. But also, you don't have to worry about the price, guys. Think about it this way. If they get the design right, they get the body right, they get the battery issue right, they get the space capacitor right, because people need room, okay? If I'm gonna buy a pickup truck, I'm buying it so I can have more room inside the car, right? You wanna have more room, you wanna make it comfy for little ones if you're traveling out with your family or you go out camping and you got a you get a big trailer or something like that you want to be able to accommodate those people also you want to make it really safe you want to make it reliable a competitor of this car is not really necessarily another EV car like say Rivian um, even though it hopes to be Rivian one day um, I, I would love for this car to be a Rivian world-class competitor but not be Rivian, okay? Be, be Mazibuco. Um, so, but the real comp uh, competition, the real competition of this car is the Ford Ranger. Okay, the Ford Ranger people, this car, oh my goodness, people love, people love this car in South Africa. And the good thing about it is, it's got such a great design, it's got such a great a power unit. So if you're gonna come into the South African market with this EV pickup truck, do yourself a favor and try to beat the Ford Ranger, okay? That's the first car I'd say try to beat before your Volkswagens and everything else. The Ford Ranger is the popular pickup truck of choice for any South African right now, period. Because it's just so good. It just ticks off all the boxes. The only downside of the Ford Ranger is that it's, it's a fuel car, right? That's the only downside about it. This is the first pickup truck in South Africa, so yeah. Please, please make it count. Okay, Mazibuko. So yeah, that's been it guys from my side. I've been AVP, join the team, signing out.